Hi, this is Karen from Cleverworks, and today I'm going to talk to you about a fabulous tool that I use a lot called the Mighty Miter Jig. This is a wonderful, wonderful tool if you have difficulties with filing straight. I do. <laughs> I've been having difficulties filing straight ever since I started to make jewelry. I was introduced to this tool while I was in college in about 1996 from my professor Joe Wood at Massachusetts College of Art. And this very, very same miter jig I've had since that time. So the durability of a really good tool lasts for a long time. This one's made in France. The parts of a miter jig are two knurled nuts, which open three, two access areas in order to file in two different ways. One is a 90 degree flat profile, and the other one is in a 45 degree profile. The first one I'm going to take a, we're going to use today is to file flat two ends of a bezel stock. This is a particularly difficult one to file by hand is that the stock for uh, a bezel is very, very, very thin. And in order to make a very, very tight fit for soldering, you want the two ends to be really, really flat. So this is a good way to do that by using this amazing little tool. This is how I start. One thing I like to do when I, before I start any kind of process is to get some of the tools that I'm going to be using out in front of me. Um, we have some nippers here. These are Lindstrom nippers. These are very, very high quality nippers. I really like them. And I have a half round, half round plier for doing some um, forming. I also have a file here. This is a bastard cut. You can get this in any hardware store. It's a cut and zero. Notice they go a bastard because it goes across single lines. And I've sequestered this file to work only with this miter jig. Even though you can't at all really pick up any steel going across because of the way that this tool has been tempered to, for hardness, it's still a good idea just to keep one separate. So let's begin. I have some, thin, some bezel stock here, some fine silver. I have one end, which is very, very, um, it's already, uh, one side of it is um, sitting out askew. And I'm just going to cut, we're going to pretend that I've already shaped this around a stone so I know what size that is, but we're just going to do this for demonstration purposes. I'm going to cut across about as flat as I can, put away my tool. I'm going to make this just a little bit flat by stripping down the ends just so I can insert it into the miter jig with a little bit of ease. You'll notice on the miter jig up through here there's a little tiny notch, a little corresponding little peg. That's actually your guide for when you're putting the metal in in order to file it flat. So I'm going to insert it right up here and you just pull it down until just the bare amount of metal is just sticking up and I'm going to close, screw down the little knurled nuts until the miter jig has completely captured my little piece of metal that's in there. So it's sitting right in through here. So I'm going to come over to my bench. I'm just going to file this off. You'll feel the metal catching a little bit as you're filing it. That's absolutely normal. It means it you're filing the silver, and I can skipping a little bit just because the file is kind of grabbing. You can hear the noise on this. Once the file has done its job, you can hear the file skipping right over the metal. That means it's now um, the metal, this little jig is at a case hardened point and you're not filing any of the silver away. So I'm taking this out. just releases. Notice that my metal's gotten a little bit torqued. That's so quite okay. I'm going to use my two blocks and I'm just going to smack this nice and flat. I just lay this down onto here best I can. It's going to be a little bit of noise and you notice this is now been pulled out nice and flat. I'm going to go to the other side now. that flat. Pick a 
bring out my file. Remember, you always want to have a sweep drawer. Silver's getting very expensive. And I come through. Allow this to last a little bit. You can see it right down here in the metal. Here's the case hardened steel, and that little silver bit is that silver bezel being caught in there. I just take that out. And now I'm filed nice and flat. Now I can easily take my half round pliers and just start to bend this and form this until the two ends come together nice and flat. And ready for soldering. that little click that slides by it. And now we have this nice, nice and flat. And you can see that there's no light coming through the end. That's going to make a very, very solid soldering seam. The other thing that the miter jig can do is to flatten the file tubing really, really well. I have some silver tubing here. And I open up the miter jig you'll see that there's these little triangular notches in here and that's actually to hold things like tubing nice and tight bring this all the way down just at the end again I'll tighten this right in doesn't matter if this is dangling out because my Bench will take care of that. And I'll just file this nice and flat. And then go right up against it. This is great, again, if you want to solder some tubing. Nice and nice flat down to a piece of metal. You can still hear this catching a little bit. That's because it's just, I'm filing away the metal. The silver on the tubing. And until I won't hear it anymore. You can go this way too, it doesn't really matter on this. Get it from all angles. Okay, there we go. So now this sits nice and nice flat. And I'll just pull this straight out and I've got a nice flat edge that if I want to, there's no seams in there whatsoever so you could get a nice tight fit in through there. The other one is if you want to get a little bit of metal and you want to file it nice and flat. I'm opening up the jaw in here. I'm still in the 90 degree area, and I'm going to switch to the 45 degree in a minute. Get this right up against the peg. Try not to leave too much hanging out if possible. It's just more for you to file. There we go. Ratchet right to that little peg, and then just tighten it up. Just begin your filing. The other nice part is if you want to make two 45 degree angles to fit in a frame, if they were to fit like this, this metal, this jig actually will allow you to do that. So we're going to access the second part which is the 45 degree angle. As you look at the jig, you're trying to figure out, well, what part is the 45 degree angle? That's actually a really good question. I want to use the top part of the jig. So we're going to lock that in. to um, 
We're going to file this down at a 45 degree angle. So I've locked the top part in from here, just so it's just peeking out. And that might take a little bit of adjustment back and forth. You kind of want to eyeball it as you're coming across that way. So here I have my 45 degree angle. Again, really nice if you want to make some beautiful silver decorative frames or you have wider stock, long wide stock, like a little tricky and you to make an, an end of a box. This could be the flap of a box and you have a perfect 45 degree angles on both sides. That's now flat. I'll pull that out now. Pull the metal out. And you can see how that sits on a 45 degree angle. I hope you have fun. I hope you consider this amazing tool which has really made my life really, really easy over the past several years now.